In February, Face Punch brought us the industrial crafting system, which was great, but they also retired Hapis. Honestly, nobody saw this coming. Hapis was just one of those maps that was different than the others, that brought so much content and joy, and just general happiness to everyone who played on it, and responsible for producing some of the most watched videos in Rust. Not even a month later, we saw another update for Hapis. Not about retirement, but revival. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hapis. That's right, Hapis is back, baby. In this tutorial, we're going to show the brand new map brought to you by Cyfex and team, detailing it from top to bottom. Everything you need to know to make your Hapis wipe a success. In not even two months, Cyfex and the Hapis development team have worked tirelessly to deliver this beautiful map you see before you on the screen. I've had the privilege to explore the map in its entirety, and I gotta tell you, it's really good, and nostalgia is hitting really hard right now. Hapis will be released next month, so guys, please make sure you join the Discord. It's an update you definitely don't want to miss. We'll cover all monuments from Safe Zone to Tier 3. With over 50 locations to cover, let's get started. We'll start off with the most basic monument, Outpost. These days, it seems to be a knee-jerk reaction. You load into the map, check to see where Outpost is, and determine how far you are. Well, depending on your spawn, you may be close or you may be far. This can be found on the map at M16. This is the same as vanilla with the tunnel's entrance right there and two additional surprises. Outpost Lake, literally right next to Outpost where you can build a base, drink the water and eat the food that spawns. It's pretty OP in my opinion. And the infamous trade of diesel to low grade is back. This map has excavator, but we'll cover that later. If you're a solo player and you don't really like going to excavator, this is a really nice surprise. And personally, I'm happy to see that you're able to do this at Outpost. The next set of questions you may have, where do I do the hatchet and crossbow mission? Where do I buy a mini? And more importantly, where do I lose all my scrap? That's Bandicamp. Located at X20, just like Outpost, it offers the same things as it does in vanilla. Except for maybe one thing, this guy apparently tweaks out every one to two seconds or so. So if you're going to Bandicamp, watch out. There's three fishing villages on the map. The first one we'll cover is the East Fishing Village, located at Z10. Here you can buy boats, trade fish for scrap, buy diving gear, and complete the fishing mission. This is the only fishing village that has the parking lot out front. In my opinion, it's really cool. Um, I don't know if I would trust leaving my camper there and come back and see it pushed in the ocean, but hey, at least it looks really nice. There's also two rivers nearby that you can drink from in case you're dehydrated in your journey. North Fishing Village, located at G3. Instead of a parking lot and rivers, you get sand, some trees, and a random crate. And in its final form, the large fishing village located at F17. Apparently there's a secret crate that's supposed to spawn here. I hadn't seen it before, but Cyfex told me last night that it actually was, but you'll have to explore and find out for yourself. And the final safe zone is the ranch. Located at L24, you can buy horses, saddlebags, horseshoes, like the standard stuff in vanilla. It's really nice being close to excavator because you don't have to take a mini. You don't have to take the tunnels. You can literally just roll up there, do it, and come here and buy a horse and gallop off into the distance. It's also a great roleplay spot if you like Yellowstone and want to be John Dutton and have your own ranch. Just don't hang around the train station. That wraps up the safe zones. Now on to tier zero. First up, we have Vents. Located at F11, right across from Refinery. Not really much going on here. There's a cool light at the bottom, but there's a series of underground tunnels leading to loading docks and refinery. And Chinook has a chance of dropping a locked crate at this location. You can find boxes, nodes, and crude barrels, which is pretty good. If you find yourself in a panic running downstairs and you accidentally fall to the bottom, there's a ladder, so you'll be able to get out. All three standard quarries are available on this map. HQM quarry at E9, stone quarry at Q6, in the sulfur quarry at U22. You can only wall in the HQM and stone quarry. The sulfur quarry has a longer building block zone, preventing groups from walling it in. Green card cave, which is exactly as it sounds. It's a cave in the side of a mountain that spawns green cards. This is a new monument they added with this version of Hapis, and it can be found at K13. It has a hobo barrel, so in case you need to get comfort for any reason, got that. All you have to do is walk in the cave, grab the card, 
Grab the box and go back to base. Oasis. No, not the 90s band. An amazing build spot out in the desert. You can find this at M21. Honestly, this is my favorite spot to build. Now with electricity, you can only imagine what kind of cool farms people would build because of this infinite water supply. I can definitely see this being a spot that clans can test on wipe day. Millitons Lake. Obviously, next to military tunnels. Located at J16. Can be used as a build spot with infinite water supply once again, or a place to wash off the salt if you lose all of your gear to a grub down in military tunnels. If you check the map, on the southwest side, there's multiple separate islands from the mainland. Coast Island at H23, Lost Island at I-24, with enough water, food, and trees for the solo player. The Cove at F-21 serves as a secret build spot for those that just want to be left alone and have a scenic view on the water. And Cargo Island at F-23. Cargo's route goes in between all of these islands, so you can expect to see a number of bases built up here with a lot of high diving boards trying to get onto cargo for free. Outpost B-3, which is right next to the launch site, located at N-9. This is a pretty good option in case launch site is occupied with PVP and a whole bunch of chaos. You can come down here and smack some barrels, loot some crates, recycle everything down to scrap and raw materials, and either escape through the tunnel or go underground up to the water pump by launch site in case you're dehydrated. And lastly, the abandoned bunker in the snow located at K4. All that's required here is taking a short walk down in a cave. If you choose the right path, you'll find the green card spawn, recycler, and maybe a note or two. That's it for tier zero. Let's venture out and explore tier one. Starting with the easy one, lighthouse. There's four of these spread out through each corner of the map. North at S1, south at O26, east at Y6, and west at D15. Each monument is the same as vanilla with the green card spawn, recycler, and loot boxes spread throughout. And of course, surrounded by water. Abandoned supermarket with two locations, one at V4, the other at V21. Same as vanilla with the food crates, loot boxes, green card spawn, and recycler. Oxum's gas station, which is actually right next to the Oasis, located at N21. Same as vanilla with the green card spawn, loot crates throughout, and a recycler. Sticking in the same vicinity as Oasis, the mining outpost out in the desert, located at K20. In a slightly different format, which is visually appealing, you get the repair bench, the recycler, the loot crates, but you also get a med crate and the pump jack. So if you don't want to farm animals, you don't want to go to outposts, this is the place for you to farm that sweet, sweet low grade and crude oil. Heading north on the map, we'll go to the North Security Tower, which is located at M5. There's no card spawn here. However, there's barrels and boxes spread throughout with the recycler at the top of the tower. No, this is the only security tower that is not a red card monument. We'll get to those later. Another water-based monument, Loading Docks, which can be found at D11. This one is pretty accessible and makes up for the fact that Hapis doesn't have any harbors. You can boat up on here, jump off and get some loot, go recycle, smell at the refinery, or get a green card and be on your way. In case you came by foot, need to escape quickly, and don't have a boat, don't worry. There's two tactical exits located here and here. Following this will take you up through vents, ultimately taking you to refinery. There's also a secret parkour that's not too bad to get to. All you have to do is follow this path. Shifty Shafts, a fun underground mine to explore, located at V9. Mainly, you'll find the green card spawn and nodes spread throughout the tunnels. However, when you get to the container here, there's a pretty cool feature. All you have to do is bring low grade, put it in the generator, turn on the generator, flip the switch, and boom, light. So you can do some underground farming without any flashlights so you can see throughout the tunnels. That wraps up tier one. Did somebody say blue? Oh, uh, I guess let's go check out tier two. Starting off with the friendly face, sewer branch, which is located at S11. You have the beloved jump puzzle with loot above and below, as well as an above ground recycler. When you go into the fuse room, you no longer have to flip a switch. Just put the fuse in, go downstairs, swipe the card, and enjoy the loot. Refinery, as shown in the intro cinematic of the video, located at G10. The question on everyone's mind, does the refinery actually work? The answer is yes. What you're looking at is a triple decker oil refinery. Yes, you heard me correctly. Three levels to refine crude oil into that sweet, sweet low grade. All you have to do is climb the ladder, pop in the wood and the crude, and then you'll get that low grade ready to craft meds. Or explosives to get rid of those pesky door campers. You can find the entrance to train tunnels here. Whether you're underground exploring in the tunnels or running along the surface, this monument absolutely pours loot. It seems like the boxes are legitimately endless. Even though this is a water treatment puzzle, it's actually a green card to swipe the door. To the left of this building is the recycler, and on the right hand side is the fuse box. After the fuse is in, go up to the door, swipe it, collect your loot, and don't forget the blue card on your way out. 
Junkyard, probably the best or maybe second best tier two monument. This can be found at F5. This monument is split into two formats, one actually being a junkyard. So yes, as you can imagine, this is another amazing spot to get loot. Not to mention you have the green card spawn, blue card puzzle, train tunnel entrance, recycler, and elite crate. This is a standard harbor puzzle. Go above the couch area, hop in the fuse box, return downstairs, swipe the card, collect your loot and blue card. If you played old Hapis, you remember this elite crate was very difficult to get. Ever since I specifically mentioned this monument and how I missed the parkour, Cyphex made it even more difficult. This isn't one consistent take, I admit, I failed, I couldn't do it! But it shows you how to jump on the container and slide down the wall to get the elite crate and other box inside. Going to the southeast part of the map, Site B, located at Y16. This monument's pretty cool because it literally has a little bit of everything. You've got the old area with the repair bench from water treatment, you've got an oversized mining outpost, a parkour jump puzzle from sewer branch, the water tower from train yard, and a harbor puzzle. What else could you need? Except there's one thing that's a little misleading. If you go up here and swipe the green card, you think you get a blue card, right? Wrong. Instead of being greeted with the blue, you're greeted with boxes. So you're wondering, where the heck is the blue card puzzle? It's actually underground. The best path is to go in this building, go down the hallway, make your first left, make your first right, pop the fuse in, go back out in the hallway, make another left, and the door is right there. Inside, you'll find a couple boxes, a blue card, and if you go explore a little bit more underneath, you'll find additional loot as well. Who can forget? The iconic listening station located at Z25. Listening station is still as amazing as old Hapis players remember. That being said, having a train tunnel entrance out here is truly OP. It gives you another way of getting endless amounts of scrap, making this base location a no-brainer for wipe day. The devs added a series of rock formations, not just for aesthetic purposes, but also for PvP. When you walk around this, you get kind of a paintball arena feel where you're going through, going to be attacking others and take tactical cover. I can only imagine the types of fights that'll ensue here. If you walk down the coast, you'll notice a cave entrance. This actually takes you underground to another loot area. To find the recycler, you go to the middle sat dish and to get the blue card, it's the usual satellite dish puzzle. Another new monument added to the map, we have the weather station located at S16 right next to launch site. When you get about halfway up, you can see there's a secret tunnels entrance where you can go here and go up through the pipe. Or if you want, you can go to the very top or fly in via helicopter. But be careful, there are NPCs up top. They're not really hard to take out, but if you're not paying attention, they'll f you up. I really like this addition to the map. It doesn't do it much justice watching from the video. It, all I can say is if you're up here and you're standing in the game and looking out, it just looks beautiful and the view is truly stunning. Above ground, there's loot boxes scattered throughout, of course, a recycler in the hangar, the MLRS aiming vehicle in case you want to launch MLRS, and if you go underground, you'll find the green card spawn as well. The dome, which has been modified in this version of Hapis, located at Q21. The monument itself is the same as vanilla. It's got the refinery, the crude barrels, the regular and military crate spawns. But Chinook has a chance of dropping a locked crate, and the amount of real estate here is insane. There's so many trees, there's so many nodes. You know, you can come out here and build wherever. It could be pretty much your own little solo's paradise. And right next to it, the Canyon Bunker, located at S21. One of the main features is it's actually connected to the dome. All you have to do is go in this cave entrance here and it'll take you out to the other side at the road. After a little bit of a walk, you'll be underneath. Once you find the recycler, you just need to go into the room right next to it. Go put the fuse in there for the green card puzzle. Once the door is powered, Go and swipe the card, collect the loot boxes, and pick up the blue card on the table. And there we have it, the Tier 2 Monuments. Let's finish up with Tier 3. Launch Site, which is located at P10. You still have Bradley, Tunnel Entrance, the green card and the red card, as well as the Elite Crates at the top. So nothing different here, outside of the scenery, and the chance of a locked crate dropped by Chinook. Military Tunnels, located at I-15. This monument is all vanilla, so nothing changed, except for the chance of Chinook dropping a locked crate. Large oil rig is located at AA0. Small oil rig is located at A11. Arctic Research is located at L3. All of which are the same experience as non hapis servers. As mentioned early on in the video, there are three security towers that are blue card puzzles. East Tower located at X12, South Tower located at R24, and West Tower located at F14. Each location requires two fuses, one up top and one down below. Once you get to the blue room, you'll have boxes, a red card on the table, and the recycler. Especially without NPCs, these monuments are pretty easy and really good for grinding red cards. So if you get a chance, definitely build nearby. Site A, located at W7. This monument is truly insane. This represents multiple monuments in one location. Satellite dish, train yard, and airfield. The only noticeable difference I found is the green card no longer spawns at this table. 
to get the blue card, pop the fuse in, take a short trip upstairs, and open the door. Now to do the other puzzle, it's a little tricky. First you walk up to the green card door, swipe it, then put the electric fuse in. You'll see a couple loot boxes here. Go up to the next level to the blue card room, swipe it, go behind it, put another electric fuse in, and then before going to the red card, go all the way to the top up here. Put one more fuse in, drop down, the red door will be powered on, and you'll be able to get all the elite crates and the amazing loot. As a reminder, you only need two fuses to power the red door, one at the very top and one behind the blue door. Site C. This can be found at S4. On the map, it appears to be misleading, but it actually is this location in the mountain. You have to go into the cave and go underneath to get down to where the loot is. You'll need two fuses, a green and a blue card, in order to get the red. In addition to the standard loot boxes scattered throughout, you'll also find a recycler. To get to the blue door, you gotta do this fast. Once you find the first fuse box, you have to go directly to the other side, swipe the green card, put in another fuse, then make a beeline to the blue door so your fuses don't burn out. After this, make a left, then a right, then go explore a bit, say hey to Fred if you want, then right behind you'll see the loot crates and the red card on the table. Last but not least, the giant excavator located at J22. As an added bonus, there's a green card puzzle in between the resource collectors. In order to use excavator, you need to get some diesel. You can go to dome, site A, weather station, or refinery, which spawns up to two diesel barrels. Site B, any of the security towers, and sewer branch have one diesel barrel. Ramping up the tutorial, we just have the tunnels left. There's a north road tunnel at M6 to M9, a west road tunnel at L16 to I17, an east road tunnel at S15 to U18. Not in the original map, but I think it's a pretty cool addition. All in all, Cyfex and team did an amazing job, not just bringing this back to life or HDRP compatible, but delivering a seamless, cohesive, and nostalgic experience all at once. So hopefully this tutorial got you pumped up and as excited as I am and motivated to play Happus when it gets released in the April 4 swipe. I'll be streaming it live with Cyfex as well, Twitch links below. Also, there's caves and random Easter eggs spread throughout the map, not covered in the tutorial, so it's up to you to find them. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you on Happus.